Welcome everyone. We have uh, Igor uh, Mekov that is uh, currently spending one year at SPEC, next door, as a chef d'Alembert, and is uh, happy to tell us a little bit of uh, his research is about. So we, he will tell us about weak measurements and uh, quantum optical lattice for correlation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to give this uh, talk today. And uh, I'm also grateful to my group in Oxford who contributed to the results, which I will present you today in this talk. Uh, and currently, for this academic year, I'm based not far from here at SPEC. And I would be very interested to discuss with you at any time. So uh, I know that uh, at the Institute for Theoretical Physics, you have very broad interests. So uh, I decided to uh, give you a very broad introduction Basically, first of all, to explain why we became interested in the field of and the direction of quantum optics of quantum gazes. I will explain what is interesting and what the current state of art in this field in experiment and the theory. And then I will proceed with our theoretical results. So the broad context of the re research is the following. So we know that classical optics is a very well established field of physics and it deals with light waves and various material devices are used to manipulate light waves and we use Maxwell equations to describe light. Then uh, the typical scenario of quantum optics in atomic physics is that uh, people study interesting quantum states of light but the motion of atoms is usually classical. So atoms are just like balls which fly around and interact with light. Uh, there is a complementary field of studies, uh, ultra-cold atoms, and the development of laser cooling techniques in the 80s uh, allowed basically uh, the new field at that time, which was called atom optics, because when atoms are cooled by laser field, uh, fields, so the atoms are very cold, the de Broglie wave length is huge. So basically the description of ultra-cold matter waves uh, is very similar to light waves in optics. So we see that the role of light and matter are completely reversed. And it is interesting that the role of material devices, which we know from optics, is now taken by light, by laser fields. So uh, you can uh, prepare basically beam splitters for matter waves, mirrors, diffraction gratings, and even trapped, trap matter waves like in cavities. But here uh, we usually solve Schrodinger equation, which is a classical field equation. The next step was to go to quantum atom optics, where the uh, quantum matter field description, uh, quantum field description of matter waves is important. And uh, the most important and famous uh, experimental results were uh, Bose Einstein condensation of bosons uh, and uh, phase transition between mode insulate and superfluid uh, states. And uh, now this is a very active field of research, ultra cold quantum gases. People work with bosons and fermions, but I would like to underline that up to now, in all experiments so far, the light is absolutely classical. So it's a tool to manipulate uh, fascinating many body states of atoms. And we decided to ask a question, what are key new physical phenomena one can find if we join uh, the quantization of both light and matter in the same uh, theoretical problem and uh, in the same experimental setup. So this is how we came to the quantum optics of quantum gazes. Uh, we started this around uh, 10 years ago already when I worked with Helmut Rich in Innsbruck. And uh, just two years ago, there were first two experiments uh, where uh, people could enter really many body regimes uh, in uh, this direction of research, which I will explain. So first of all, let me briefly uh, mention uh, what is the state of art in the field of cold atoms with what I call classical optical lattices. I don't know if you are very well familiar with this or not. So in, in short, uh, the idea, one of the ideas and motivation for cold atoms and optical lattices is to mimic uh, condensed matter phenomena uh, again, and which are described by different lattice models. So uh, rather strong laser fields uh, create uh, patterns and periodic potentials. They can be in 1D, 2D, or 3D. And uh, 
the atoms can tunnel between sites in these potentials and uh, show many body features due to the interaction uh, between the atoms. Now, what are uh, problems of these fields? Sometimes there are also other sides of advantages of these fields. So first, uh, first of all, I would like to underline that quantum nature of light is not important in this field of studies at all. So light is not just non-classical. It is uh, basically described by classical periodic functions, and they're prescribed. So this is the state of that. Now, uh, typically, there is no coupling to external baths. And indeed, it was considered as an advantage of this field. Uh, the system was isolated from the environment. But to model condensed matter systems, real condensed matter systems, we indeed need to couple to bath. And apparently, this is very difficult in the field of uh, cold atoms. Now, another problem that the detection of the states is completely destructive. So people switch off the slightest potential. And to measure basically one point or one set of experimental points, they destroy the system. So atoms fall down, they measure it, and to uh, measure the next point, they should create the state again. So the measurement is completely destructive. Uh, the most famous uh, effect in this field is the superfluid to mot insulator phase transition obtained in Immanuel Bloch's group. And uh, so uh, by changing the tunneling rate of atoms between sites on a lattice and changing the interaction strength, one can go from superfluid, which in the time of light measurement shows the um, interference, matter wave interference, just like in classical optics in diff uh, for light, which can diffract from diff diffraction grating, one can see interference as well. So uh, here, if you switch off the lattice, atoms fall down, and you can see interference of uh, matter waves. And for mot insulator state, uh, which is given by product of Fox state, so for example, one, one, one atom at each lattice site, there is no interference because there is no phase of matter waves. Now, we would like to introduce the quantumness of light, theoretically. And for this, we typically consider the following system. We include optical lattice with ultra-cold atoms inside a high Q optical cavity. And thus, we enter the field of uh, cavity QED with uh, many body systems. So the interaction of light and matter is enhanced by the presence of the cavity. And one can consider the following uh, new uh, effects. So basically, uh, let us have a look what are the key new opportunities which we can get. And this will be an uh, outline of my talk today, after I will uh, finish with my maybe long introduction. So first of all, the light and atoms are entangled. So this means that like an EPR uh, paradox scenario, if you measure uh, one part of system, you also project the state of another part of uh, system. Here, if you measure light leaking from the cavity, you will also project uh, the many body state of atoms as well. Now, what uh, this opens, uh, we have shown that the weak measurement uh, constitutes a novel source of competitions in this many body system. So it can compete with tunneling and atomic interaction. Uh, on the basis of this, we have shown that light can uh, be considered as a Q and D probe for uh, quantum non-demolition measurements and can generate multipartite entangled modes of matter waves. Uh, and actually, I will not consider this, uh, this today. I will focus on more interesting effects where measurement is not Q and D. Q and D is indeed a very popular subject, but there are effects which are even more interesting. So we have demonstrated the non-Hermitian effects beyond uh, known quantum Zeno dynamics. And you can uh, engineer long-range correlated tunneling, uh, which, does not which is not present typically in Hubbard models, for example. For fermions, we demonstrated the measurement-induced antiferromagnetic order, as well as protection and breakup of fermionic pairs. The next level of complexity is when we consider not uh, light, the light not only just as a measurement tool, but uh, also uh, the light in the cavity creates the quantum trapping potential where the atoms are trapped. So we go really to the uh, notion of quantum optical lattices. So we see that. Uh, uh, here, uh, the light mode uh, will provide the standing wave, of a standing wave of light, and it will end up to the uh, usual optical lattice potential. 
So this will give opportunities to obtain novel phases, not only of densities like uh, charge density waves or super solid like states, but also what we showed, you can obtain some states of bonds uh, and here the bonds are areas between the lattice sites. So we could show the states like dimers and trimers and so on, which are similar to um, valence bond solids. And we can think about quantum simulators based on the collective light matter interaction. So today I will start with quantum measurement effects and uh, depending on time, uh, I will briefly probably discuss the second part of uh, this uh, quantum phases of light and matter. It is also interesting to look on this problem um, in comparison with quantum phase transitions and dissipative phase transitions. So there is a very well known comparison between uh, quantum phase transitions and dissipative phase transitions and I think it comes from the paper of Ignacio Sirac. So uh, in quantum phase transitions, we usually study closed systems and, are interest and we solve the problem by using Schrodinger equation with some Hamiltonian and we study the properties of ground state. And the generalization of this is the consideration of open dissipative systems where instead of ground state, we are interested in the steady state which can be different. And uh, in particular, we can solve a master equation in Lindblad form which uh, includes the closed systems as a special case. Now one can think uh, what can be the generalization of this and more general case is to consider quantum measurements, possibly quantum continuous measurements and moreover the feedback control of these systems. Now uh, if I explain uh, this in terms of uh, the system which we usually have in mind, uh, we need to solve the stochastic master equation with feedback, which is the generalization of the master equation. And we will be interested in dynamical or steady state, which can be obtained by feedback loop, which can be applied uh, to this system. So we can think about open control systems in this case. And indeed, quantum measurement and dissipation are strongly related to each other. So if we measure photons and uh, keep track record of where the photons are detected, so this would correspond to single quantum trajectories and measurement. Then if we have many quantum trajectories and average over all quantum trajectories, we get nothing but a solution of master equation. So indeed, uh, measurements and dissipations are related to each other. But in our uh, research, we, are speci we specifically focused on cases where the measurement gives something different from what can be expected from master equation or after averaging over all uh, quantum trajectories. Now, uh, the experimental state of the art in this field is the following. I would say that uh, people already obtain dynamical optical lattices where the potential, trapping potential, depends dynamically on the many body state of atoms, but still there are no experiment in the really quantum regime where the quantization of the potential is important. So the short story is the following. In 2010, in the group of Tillman Esslinger, they obtained uh, the Dickey phase transition for the first time. Also theoretically, it was predicted in 70s, I, gu I guess, many decades ago. And they saw self-organization of atoms where the homogeneous BC, uh, changed its form and the checkerboard pattern of densities uh, was formed basically after some thresh threshold. This experiment was made without any optical lattice. Then uh, they introduced optical lattice in the system and observed already uh, really many body strong uh, states with atomic interaction. So they observed more insulator, superfluid, density waves and lattice supersolid and there are a lot of discussions what we can say about the super solid state. And uh, this year they introduced another setup and now they work with uh, different geometries of optical lattices and they hope to observe uh, other states as well. Now uh, the last analogy for today, so as I will be talking about quantum measurements, uh, the most famous uh, experiment in this field is the experiment of Serge Aroche. Uh, where they prepared by measurement uh, interesting quantum states of light in a cavity. And how did they do this? They sent uh, atoms one by one. Again, atoms and light were entangled. They measured atoms at the output of the system. And 
they projected the state and pre prepared four states of photons, Schrodinger cat state of photons, and other states as well. Here you see that the role of light and matter is reversed. We have many body atomic state, we shine light, and we want uh, to consider the measurement of light. But uh, so it is not just analogy. What is the advantage of this system in comparison to uh, this uh, setup? If we think what is the analogy of a single cavity for light, here this will be a single site of an optical lattice which can store quantum state of matter fields. For example, for motor insulator, this would be Fock state. Uh, for superfluid, this would be almost coherent state in a single site. And of course, uh, as we can have uh, easily hundreds and thousands of sites, we enter the regime of many body physics, which is almost, well, practically impossible to do in uh, this Arosh setup. And of course, atoms can be fermions and bosons, and uh, the physics is much richer. And sorry, the experiments you showed before were all, all only bosons? Right? Experiments are only with bosons. Now there are now, there, I think there is a, a plan to set up fermions, and I think it's at the EPF, EPFL in, in Lausanne. Uh, and it comes also from the group of uh, Tillman Esslinger, so people move. So uh, let me introduce a very simple model for light scattering. And uh, it is very simple because there is a classical analogy, uh, so very simple classical analogy. So the Amplitude of scattered light is given by the distribution of densities of atoms at each lati or at lattice site. So this is trivial. So this is how we describe diffraction in classical optics. But uh, here we use Heisenberg picture. So the density is an operator, and A out is uh, the uh, annihilation operator of light, which is scattered. Uh, so you can derive this simple expression starting from, let's say, James Cummings model. You adiabatically eliminate the upper state because we will consider very valve resonant uh, light matter interaction and uh, proceed in this way. So then we use the second quantization uh, approach. We introduce the field operators here, uh, which give you density distribution. So then we proceed uh, in a way similar um, how the Bose-Hubbard model is derived. We expand the field operator in terms of Vanier function basis. And B is now the annihilation operator of, of an atom at site I. And if you substitute this into this integral expression, you see that the scattered light uh, amplitude or annihilation operator is given by two terms. So the first term is given by the on-site densities, this which gives you typical diffraction. And also there is uh, a term which is responsible for the matter wave interference between neighboring sites. So due to the overlap of Vanier functions, basically. And there is an analogy with spin physics here. If you think about spins on a block sphere, you can be interested in the SZ component. This would be uh, related to this D operator. And you can think about coherences of spin, SX and SY component. And uh, this is similar to this uh, term, which gives you the coherence between neighboring sites. Uh, now, again, so we can describe diffraction. But uh, th the most interesting effects will appear not at the diffraction maxima, not at the Bragg angles, but uh, between Bragg angles at diffraction minima, because their classical scattering is completely suppressed. So we are not interested in classical light scattering. But we are interested in quantum contribution to the scattering, which will be shown, which will appear between Bragg peaks at diffraction minima. And uh, this is, um, again, the explanation why diffraction minima are interesting. So if we think how diffraction minima appear in optics, we can un uh, realize that there are groups of atoms. Uh, and the light scat scattered from the groups of atoms coherently suppress each other. Uh, so you can think, so the simplest example is the following. If you think about scattering at 90 degrees, uh, the scattering from each second site will have opposite phase. So the phase will be 0 pi, 0 pi, 0 pi. And if you write this density operator, you will get the following uh, contribution from odd and even sites. So basically what we say, we introduce two atomic modes, atoms at odd sites and atoms at even sites. And what is important for quantum measurement, that all atoms in one mode are completely indistinguishable from each other by light scattering. So when photons are scattered, you cannot say uh, which uh, atom scattered this photon. 
And uh, this is a, a feature of global light scattering. And what is important, when we will co uh, consider the projection, so the uh, measurement back action pro will project our state to some state where the quantum coherence and quantum uh, superposition will be kept. Because uh, light scattering does not break the quantum coherence inside one mode. This will be important for us. So we can generalize this to uh, more modes. But again, the simplest example to understand this is just to think about odd and even sides. Uh, so two modes which are basically loaded like this. So uh, the uh, phase difference between input light and the scattered light. So the distance between lattice side is lambda, lambda over 2, usually, wavelength over 2. And the wavelength of the optical Yes, yes. So lambda is the uh, wave length of light. So the period of optical lattice is lambda over 2. Yes. And, and the phase of scattered light from side to side will change the phase the by pi. Uh, the scattered light will have different phase, yes, because the atoms are placed at different points. So at this configuration. Well, because so the phase difference will be uh, so it depends on the position of atom basically to the detector. You can think like this in, in the far field zone. So the atoms are at different positions. So the phase will be different. Now, uh, important point here is that we consider global scattering. But we see that uh, light scattering has uh, a pattern. It has spatial structure. And uh, we will see that the spatial structure of scattering, and as we measure light, the spatial structure of dissipation and measurement will enable the competition between global uh, process and the short range uh, tunneling. Because otherwise, if there would be no uh, structure in the light scattering, uh, they would act on a completely different space scales, global interaction and uh, short range tunneling just between neighboring sites. Now uh, I, will, uh, I am coming to the uh, measurement back action. So uh, if you think about increasing the measurement strength, uh, if there is no measurement, uh, there is free many body unitary dynamics in the closed system. Now, another well known effect uh, corresponds to the very strong projective measurement. And this is typically called quantum Zeno effect if you freeze your dynamics at one level by measurement. Or more generally, quantum Zeno dynamics if you project your system by some, uh, to, to, the, to some uh, subspace of the initial Hilbert space. Uh, now, we want to study the intermediate regime. Uh, and uh, first, I will focus on rather strong measurement, but still weaker than the full pr fully projective measurement. And uh, I will build perturbation theory um, around quantum xenodynamics, basically. And then I will present the results for really uh, weak measurement close to uh, free evolution. And importantly, these effects uh, correspond to measurements which are not quantum non-demolition. Otherwise, it is impossible to get these effects. Now, a uh, very simple slide uh, to underline physically why there is entanglement between atoms and light in this system. So uh, if you think about uh, basically usual double slit Lian experiment, and this would correspond to two atoms in the cavity here, uh, you can find, let's say, diffraction minimum in this direction. But if you think about Yan experiment with only one slit, one atom, but in the superposition of two positions, so atom is either on the left or atom or either on the right, uh, you will see that if when when light will be scattered from the superposition state, there will be different light amplitudes correlated with uh, part of the wave function 1, 0, and 0, 1. Now you see that uh, there is light matter entanglement which is built. And what is measurement back action? If we measure light, if we determine the phase of light, either it is minus alpha or plus alpha, this means that we will project to some specific state, either 1, 0, or 0, 1. So we will determine where the atom is. And this is the essence of the measurement back action and projection. Now, this is extremely simple slide. And now I want to uh, go to uh, many body uh, description. So we start with the product state of some light and many body state. 
and many body state we express in the basis of uh, Fox state, so all um, uh, distributions of atoms at lattice sites. Now uh, we use the approach uh, of quantum trajectories, and according to this approach, and uh, this is known approach, of course. So uh, when there are no photo detections, uh, then uh, the system evolves according to non-Hermitian uh, Hamiltonian. So we add this uh, a dagger a term, where a is uh, the anni uh, annihilation operator of the photon field. So you see that the entanglement builds between uh, light and matter, just similar to this expression. I just rewrite this uh, for many body context. Yes. So, sorry, so you have one mode of the photons. Uh, one mode of the photons, yes. The Hamiltonian, is there a coupling between photon and, and whatever else? Yes, yes, yes. Not. Yes, yes, exactly. So then uh, if a uh, photon is detected, uh, one should apply uh, the annihilation ob operator. We have a quantum jump. And again, the jump operator is proportional to the density operator, as I explained. And uh, it will be given by the sum of small number of modes. Again, just rem uh, remember, it could be sum of or difference of odd and even sides, for example. Now we apply the annihilation operator. There is quantum jump. And co uh, combining these two, uh, two steps, jumps and non-Hermitian evolution, we can uh, construct a quantum trajectory and this uh, time evolution with jumps and periods of uh, smooth non-Hermitian evolution. Now the quantum Zeno dynamics would correspond to the case uh, if we determine the amplitude of scattered light then the system will be projected to some subspace of the initial Hilbert space and can be frozen there by measurement. So this is quantum Zeno dynamics, and this is quite known uh, effect. We want to go beyond, and we want to consider the measurement which is a little bit weaker. So what can happen? Now I will explain uh, our system in more details. So uh, we consider this uh, Hamiltonian and quantum jumps, and uh, jumps are global in our case, which is important. So for the uh, Hamiltonian, we can see the Bose-Hubbard model and later uh, Fermi-Hubbard model. So there is a tunneling of atoms between neighboring lattice sites, uh, Bi dagger Bj. There is chemical potential, and there is on-site uh, atomic interaction given by the interaction strength uh, U. Now the strong measurement and quantum Zeno dynamics can potentially destroy the uh, transition in Hilbert space be between two levels or two parts of subspaces. Because otherwise, the, uh, this process would be uh, incompatible with the measurement outcome. So I will explain this in more details in the next slide. But uh, the effect which we include, the second order effect uh, using perturbation theory, uh, would correspond to the second order process like this, which is similar to Raman transition in optics, for example. The system cannot go. Uh, quantum Zeno effect destroys this tunneling uh, or transition. But uh, due to the second order uh, transition, the system can go via uh, virtual states. Now I go closer to our system. So if we do perturbation theory on the uh, Bose-Hubbard model, we can get additional term which look like this. So uh, theoretically, the approach is quite similar to what is used uh, in a TJ model, for example. Here, uh, the difference is that we can see the global light scattering, so the global light matter interaction. And uh, therefore, we get a global additional term, which is a second order term. So here you see that one atom can tunnel between neighboring sites at one place, and another atom at the same uh, time should tunnel at between other uh, lattice sites. And these two lattice sites, so here and two sites here, should belong to different modes, because the tunneling between uh, uh, different standard tunneling between different modes is forbidden by uh, the uh, measurement, by the projection. So just to explain this uh, in physical terms, the simplest case, if you think about uh, shining light on the central part of your lattice, then uh, quantum Zeno dynamics, and, uh, so, and you freeze you, uh, the atom number in this uh, lattice part. So you know your atom here by measurement. Then uh, quantum Zeno dynamics corresponds to the tunneling of atoms inside this region, but the atoms cannot tunnel out and atoms can, cannot come in because this would change the atom number. 
If the measurement is a little bit weaker, this second order term uh, corresponds to the paired tunneling. So one atom can uh, come in and another atom can uh, come out at the same time, which is quite obvious, because this would keep the atom number the same. So uh, this is the uh, engineering, basically, of second order process, which corresponds to this term in the Hamiltonian. And uh, in um, many body physics of ultra-cold gases, this is quite a non-trivial uh, part, because it is indeed very difficult to engineer long-range uh, processes, second order processes, uh, beyond standard Hubbard models. Uh, So you can, uh, uh, so the uh, zero order of perturbation theory is uh, the quantum xenodynamics. You go to some subspace, and then you, uh, you can write your unitary evolution operator and uh, consider the unitary dynamics as a small parameter. So not the uh, non-hermitian non term, small parameter, but the unitary uh, evolution is a small parameter in the exponent, let's say. And then you do perturbation theory with the unitary operator, with the unitary evolution operator. And so in your picture, of like a couple of slides before you have this thing where you are saying you apply the, you do, you do unitary evolution with that Hamiltonian and then at some point you apply the photon operator? Uh, for, for jumps. So we, can, uh, we consider continuous evolution. Uh, there are always, uh, always, jumps. Uh, always jumps and non-Hermitian evolution in between. Yes, H. yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what is also interesting here that we can think about uh, non-Hermitian evolution in a quite specific case. So, as I said, uh, we can consider quantum trajectories as, uh, uh, as quantum jumps and non-Hermitian evolution. But here we can think about uh, non-Hermitian evolution in more narrow sense, which is more interesting, because here we can ev avoid applying quantum jumps, which usually to solve master equation you cannot do uh, whatsoever. Otherwise, you get wrong uh, answer. So here, if you uh, condition your state and uh, require that the system stays in the same subspace of your Hilbert space, let's say uh, subspace which corresponds to the fixed atom number in the central part, uh, you can get only evolution with non-Hermitian Hamiltonian without quantum jumps. So this is al already a step beyond what can be expected from dissipation. Because to describe dissipation, you, always, you should always uh, apply both quantum jumps and non-Hermitian evolution. Now you can also vi visualize this problem. Uh, so here you see, for example, that atom here uh, somehow disappears and appears at this side, where uh, number of atoms here is stay, stays untouched, but this is basically what I explained before. Uh, you can also think about this as designing systems and reservoirs, because here uh, uh, two modes, one and three, uh, either uh, provide or subtract atoms in pairs. And interesting, interestingly, if you think about density-density uh, correlations in these three modes, they will be zero, as they should be for quantum xeno uh, dynamics. But this paired correlated tunneling can uh, introduce entanglement. So here, all three modes will be entangled due to this uh, second order process. And uh, thus, these uh, baths on the left and on the right will be entangled and correlated. Now, uh, you can also uh, imagine another situation. If you put all atoms, let's say, at odd sites only, they cannot tunnel. And if you measure, indeed, as I always consider. Now, if you put uh, an atom to the uh, complementary mode, they will be able to tunnel because there is a second uh, mode, it is populated, and uh, the second order tunneling can happen. Now, there could be uh, other scenarios. You can freeze not the atom number, but the atom number difference at two sides or two modes for uh, really many atoms. And in this case, the atoms will come in pairs to these two sides or will live in pairs. So this is already a little bit similar to, let's say, parametric down conversion to production of uh, photon pairs in quantum optics. And this is designed by measurement. Now, let me uh, go to another limiting case from a uh, very strong measurement, close to quantum xenodynamics, to very weak measurement. Uh, 
Uh, here I will consider the measurement of atom number at odd sides or even sides if you wish. Now we can ask the question what will happen in this two mode system if you kick a system just a little bit. So the atoms can start to oscillate between odd and even sides, but the amplitude of these oscillations will be very small if you don't measure anything. But also the distribution of atom number at one mode, at odd side, let's say, it will spread in time. But the mean value will oscillate with tiny amplitude. Now, if we will measure, just measure, count atom number at uh, one of the modes, by photons again, so what we see is that the amplitude of atomic oscillations will uh, will be enhanced and they will take the maximal value. So at some point all atoms will be at odd sides and some points atoms will be at even sides. And this is actually distribution function as well, so this curve has a width. So you see that the measurement uh, squeezes the uncertainty in the atom number as it should be because you measure and you decrease the quantum uncertainty in this variable. But also this process enhances these oscillations. Now you can generalize this for many modes, for two modes, for three modes. Uh, in particular, you can think about noon states, which is a superposition of all atoms being on the odd sides and superposition of all atoms being at the even sides. And what is interesting here, these oscillations appear only at single quantum trajectories. So if you plot another quantum trajectory, so the realization of photocounts, uh, you will find also uh, oscillations with maximal amplitudes, but uh, they will be shifted in time. So if you uh, just solve master equation, if you average over all quantum trajectories, you will find just nothing, just constant, so no oscillations at all. Uh, nevertheless, here it is important that we don't need any post-selection, as often we need in quantum optics, because when you monitor your system, you know that the maximal value of scattered light would correspond to the maximal imbalance between two modes. So uh, I would like to underline also this is effect of single quantum trajectory. You don't need any post-selection. You know when you get interest in state with maximal imbalance. Now we can generalize this for fermions. And so what I showed here, basically you enhance oscillations in the variable which you measure. And here we measured the atom number in one of the modes. It is also possible to measure staggered magnetization by uh, choosing some uh, tricky optical geometry, different polarizations of light, and uh, which will be sensitive to the, uh, the atom number difference between number of fermions up and number of fermions spin, spin, up, spin up and spin down. So, uh, so at the end, you can measure the staggered magnetization, which is a combination of two ideas, measuring the fluctuations of at atom number difference at odd and even sides, and spin up and spin down. So, and again, uh, what you measure can be enhanced just by measuring this quantity. So we see the oscillations of staggered magnetization, and the maximal staggered magnetization corresponds to the antiferromagnetic state. So basically, you can uh, generate the antiferromagnetic order uh, by the measurement back action. And I would like to underline that this does not really correspond to quantum Zeno effect. If your measurement uh, uh, were very strong, you wouldn't get any oscillations at all. You would just freeze dynamics. But here you see really the competition between measurement, which squeezes the uncertainty, and tunneling, which uh, uh, tends to spread uh, the uncertainty, increase uncertainty, and uh, shows these oscillatory dynamics. Sorry. Mm -hmm. In this uh, two question, actually, this, uh, what you have to do, you have to play with the polarization of the photon to, to couple to the magnetic? Yes, so yes, two polarizations, and okay. you play with amplitudes of light. So the, jump mm -hmm. so the jump operator would, uh, it will be proportional to the staggered magnetization. So this is okay. a jump operator of one of the polarization, let's okay. say. Okay. So you design your jump operator, and then you project uh, in dynamical sense to some trajectory. Now, we also considered strongly interacting fermions. So usually they form uh, pairs, spin up, spin down. And uh, so here, uh, you see that uh, without measurement, let's say, fermions start to tunnel in pairs. So there is no probability 
to find uh, separated fermions. But uh, while they tunnel, the fermions can split because the interaction is not infinitely strong. And uh, for example, if we measure the density of uh, fermions, we can even increase this breakup of fermionic pairs, which is rather simple because the measurement introduces noise, so the pairs are destroyed. So the, there is a breakup of the pairs. But if we measure the magnetization, if we design our gem operator in such a way that it measures magnetization, we can see that the uh, tunneling uh, and the, fermion, uh, the fermions continue to tunnel in pairs. So this corresponds to the protection of the fermionic pairs um, due to the measurement back action. And again, this is not a Zeno effect. This is some dynamical competition between weak measurement and the tunneling. Sorry, but uh, I'm, I'm confused. The, the Cooper pairs are in the singlet? Uh, yes, so this is... Uh, what is the magnetization then? Zero. So we project to zero magnetization. Okay. And these are fermions on a lattice. I see. So there is no... Okay. So it's in a single state, but still you measure the permagnetization. Yes. yes. Okay. Now, uh, so we can also analyze imperfect detection, and this is how we can describe... Uh, so we can describe the transition from quantum measurement to dissipation. So here, <coughs> what I showed you, oscillations with perfect detection. But if some photons are lost, so the detector is imperfect, we can uh, describe uh, the dissipation, actually. So you see that these oscillations degrade. And when you don't detect any photons, so you average over trajectories, you don't know when exactly the photons were detected, you see that there are no oscillations at all, but the uncertainty is very large. So this corresponds to the uh, standard dissipation case. Now, another important step is that we can apply the feedback control to this system and stabilize these states, either with maximal imbalance or with uh, uh, or anti-ferromagnetic state. Uh, so here I would just to uh, talk about this plot. So by applying uh, the feedback loop, so basically uh, uh, tuning the depth of optical lattice, so the tuning the uh, tunneling coefficient, basically, uh, you can uh, stabilize these oscillations and uh, get some stationary state due to the dynamical feedback. And it is indeed interesting that this stabilized state is neither uh, eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, it is also not the steady state of master equation. Basically, you can stabilize uh, different many-body states uh, combining this idea of quantum measurement and feedback uh, control. Now, uh, to the second part, uh, so it's not second half, but it's just really second part. I will be brief. Uh, here, uh, we uh, look on another uh, side of the same problem, basically. So here, I will not be talking about uh, measurement back action, but rather uh, the steady state of uh, the system. And uh, here, we write effective Hamiltonian, which uh, takes into account light matter interaction, and we will see uh, what are the phases which can be obtained during the, uh, due to the competition between global interaction and uh, short range interactions. So I change a little bit the notations. Again, I introduce the sum of D and B operators uh, due to the density light scattering and due to the scattering from bonds from the area between uh, lattice sites. Now I call this full operator F, and physically it originates from the density, as I explained to you at the very beginning of my talk. So uh, we can write effective Hamiltonian, and this, this is a Hamiltonian which describes the light scattering described by A operators from the densities of atoms and from the bonds which uh, F, operators, uh, or F operator describes. Now, uh, again, so you can think about this. You can start with Jenks Cummings model and adiabatically eliminate the upper state of two level atoms and get this density contribution. Now you can go further and adiabatically eliminate uh, A variable from here because it can be roughly considered as being proportional to density again. And this is how we get this effective Hamiltonian, which describes the density, density or bond bond interaction in the system due to the uh, light scattering. Now, the most uh, famous uh, experiment in this field is uh, the experiment of Tillman Esslinger, where they obtained Dickey phase transition, and they also called the super solid state. Um, so uh, they started with homogeneous BC in the cavity, but then 
when the pump at 90 degrees increased some threshold, uh, there was a self-organization and the density pattern self-organized in a checkerboard pattern. So uh, how, uh, and they, the experiment was without lattice. Now how they understand this in my Hamiltonian, which was written in, uh, for the lattice. Indeed, it is simple. So if uh, the coupling coefficient is negative, to minimize the energy, uh, the system wants to enhance this light matter interaction. So you see, if we forget about B contribution, how to enhance this? For homogeneous distribution, this is nearly zero. But if the atoms again jump to odd or even sides, this will be indeed maximal. So this explains roughly the, uh, this decay phase transition on a lattice. So the system wants to minimize the energy. Then we can also rewrite this term in a very simple way. And we see that there is effective interaction between two modes, atoms at odd and even sides. This also explains why the resultant states have proper, uh, has properties of supersolid state, which was originally predicted not for this global interaction, of course, but for short range interaction of atoms at neighboring sites. So when atoms at neighboring sites repel each other, uh, there is, uh, uh, it is possible to get supersolid state with uh, density order and long range uh, coherence as well. Here we don't have this uh, short range interaction, but we have interaction between modes. And this, uh, you can have a guess that uh, basically this explains why these resulting states have similar properties of the supersolid state. Now, uh, in general, if we remind ourselves about this bond interaction, we can write this F uh, dagger F term in this form. And you see that uh, you can think about many different effects, which I will not explain in details. You can have density-density interaction and bond-bond interaction and bond-density interaction. So you can also uh, introduce several modes, and you can tune the effective uh, interaction length between these atomic modes, which is very difficult in cold atom physics. People try to do this with Rydberg atoms and dipolar molecules. But uh, I would like to uh, show what would correspond to this self-organization or supersolid state if we think about bonds only. So for bonds, similarly, we have uh, light scattering, which is different from two bonds uh, one, one pair of bonds and another pair of bonds. You have similar plus minus uh, sign flip. And uh, what we showed is that you can get a dimerized state. So physically, this corresponds to the case where the phase of matter waves will be the same at a pair of sides. And then it flips at the next pair of sides. So here, uh, the system uh, goes to the dark state of the tunneling operator to minimize the density of atomic matter waves at this point where the light scattering will have opposite sign. So instead of jumping to one mode, here the system self-organizes in a different way, which uh, have a look of, uh, of uh, like dimers. And we can get also trimers and tetramers and so on, depending on the number of modes. So in, uh, where did that is minus size from? Uh, also from a uh, different phase of scattered light. So you can enhance the scattered light from the bones. I will not describe how. And uh, so the phase will flip from plus 1, minus 1, similarly to the case of Esslinger, which uh, where the scattering from sides uh, flips the sign. And this corresponds to the phase transition. Uh, and uh, so the standard tunneling tends to delocalize your atoms. And the atomic uh, light matter interaction term tends to create this dimer. So there is some uh, phase transition at, at some point. Now, if we include uh, even more quantumness of our, uh, uh, in our uh, trapping potential, uh, we can find the terms in the Hamiltonian, which look like this. And this is clear if you take a square of this. And uh, inside these terms, you can find also the density-density interaction terms. Because this is a pair tunneling, there are terms like this. And uh, we can also, we were able to show some instabilities related to density-density interaction. And this brings us closer to more standard uh, definition of supersolid state in the extended uh, Bose-Hubbard model. And with this, I want to conclude. So uh, the conclusions are the following. Uh, the light scattering can generate uh, entangled modes of quantum matter fields, which I did not really explain that they're entangled, and they show uh, genuinely uh, multipartite entanglement. Uh, 
Uh, we have shown that the back action of weak measurement uh, constitutes a novel source of competitions in the context of many body physics. And I showed you the non Hermitian effects beyond quantum xenodynamics and the generation of various states of bosons and fermions. Uh, and for quantum and dynamical optical lattices, uh, one can uh, hope uh, that experimentalists will obtain novel phases of densities and uh, metawave coherences, uh, which are bonds. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, maybe we have time for a few questions. I can start with one question. So when you talk about the quantum phase transition at the very end in this yes. diagram, mm -hmm. if what is what do you what is it? Do you mean a ground state, equilibrium? Uh, do you mean a quantum phase transition or an equilibrium one? Or it's a uh, it's a steady state. Uh, it's a steady state of uh, open system of the master equation, which uh, here corresponds to the ground state of the effective Hamiltonian. So the states would be similar. Probably there are some differences in, in quantum fluctuations. Let's say, but uh, the first approximation. You mean uh, uh, the, the ground state of which effective Hamiltonian? Uh, of uh, of this uh, of this effective Hamiltonian ah. where where we adiabatically eliminated light. I see. And, and is it clear that it should be really the same? Uh, the state, uh, the In the first approximation, yes. There are papers by Peter Domokos, for example, uh, for the similar uh, systems where they show that uh, the differences are in quantum f in some quantum fluctuations, which is important, and it is interesting to study as well. Thank you.